we're about to spec two evos but i want one to be crazy and i want one to be kind of like maybe crowd spec maybe i'll let you guys spec it i don't know what do you think <laughs> To the channel, uh, wonderful days, always uh, Aventador's driving by us. Jumping in the Urus, today is gonna be good, I hope. Uh, remember that time we went to the county to do all that business paperwork? Well, we got a lot of that paperwork done, and now Tony and I are jumping back in the car to head back to the county so we can turn some of this paperwork in and hopefully walk out with a new activity for our license. Now, what does that mean? That means that essentially our car dealership is live, right? Like live meaning the fact that we are licensed and able to do business with used cars. Right now I can buy and sell and do a bunch of stuff, but I don't have a full license to sell like, like a used car lot. I can't display more than five. I have a limited used car sales license is what that means, okay? okay. Uh, to get into technicalities, I wanna get the full blown everything. I can do whatever I want license. And uh, we did a lot of paperwork, and hopefully, whew. I'm super excited because finally, everybody's been asking about the dealership. When are you gonna open it? When can we do this? Oh man, Jesus. what happened? You drove. Oh, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> All right, tell them just to, just just tell them. I'm just gonna hold the camera. Anyway, um, we can finally operate and do what we need to do, but there's kind of a twist to it. Houston's obviously always got the thinker going, but you guys will find out here in a minute what we have going on. That was like legit really odd. We were all standing in line before the even line even started. I couldn't even film that. I, she was way too close. It, like you gotta move to the front weirdest of the line. thing ever. Like the line was like nine feet long. <laughs> And it was three people before the line started. And then the lady was like, well, what are you doing? And I was just like, just waiting for the line. It made it look really long. It was really. so long. It could be legit 30 minutes. <laughs> uh, honestly, it's a pretty popping day at the county. It not is. gonna lie. I feel like they were like closed yesterday because <laughs> I've never seen this many people here. Um, but now you have to get a, a license for Uber and Lyft. So I think a lot more activities happen in this building because obviously Uber and Lyft is a very lucrative job. So. You know, you can definitely see a lot of people in here trying to get their licenses and doing a lot of cool stuff. So, you know, if uh, if I recommend anything, yeah, Uber and Lyft. Yeah, it's, it's great. And that was a success. It was. We got success. paperwork to prove no, it. No, no, um, this is the paperwork that you need. Oh, wait, right here. Yeah. All right. So check this out. In the meantime, we were just filling out these uh, fictitious firm names, get the bank accounts right, get all the stuff right. Our guy got his notary license. <laughs> it's pretty epic. It was. You know, I'm, I'm like really thinking that if you if you were to do that, Tony, and I'm, become a no, certified notary, to. you could potentially make hundreds of dollars a year extra. Yes. Hundreds. That's what I'm looking for. You know, it costs $35 to become a notary. You got to swear in like like you're, you're becoming president. And um, this year, if, it, if I become a notary, I'm getting that right there. If you become that a notary, right you're getting a Hellcat? Hold on, let me zoom in. Literally, you... You could wrap it saying you are a notary. Yeah. You could the, put the, the official notary. seal <laughs> and everything on the door. Dude, I'd, that's I'd, a great sure be a, idea. I'd be the Hellcat notary. I come and notarize your stuff in a Hellcat. 707 notary. Uh, horsepower. Notary, yeah, horsepower, and I'm oh, I'm limiting myself to 707 notarized papers per year. That's it. So make sure you you get it. I'm, my my fee's gonna be higher. You got charge for gas, man. Come on, I'm gonna be the Hellcat notary. Get it together. That. Sounds like a freaking awesome <laughs> plan, okay? Until the guy with the Urus comes in as the Urus notary. Oh. What? Oh. Today feels like a sushi burrito day. This is one of my favorite spots in the city because um, it's always it's always the quality that you want when you come to a sushi burrito, right? Fish is cold, rice is white. You know, everything is good over here. So, we've got some cool logos on the wall, you know? So, uh, Tony, today, where are you at? I'm with the, I love shrimp tempura and Ew. the grilled salmon. That's, That's where that, I go. What do you do? That sounds gross on two levels. Salmon and shrimp, nah. I'm a spicy tuna, kind of spicy crab type person. 
Uh, I make it more of like a, a flavor explosion. Throw some mango in there. You know, we got some green, uh, what, what's the green stuff called? Uh, seaweed salad in there. And uh, I even put some crunchy little tempura flakes, you know? So it's a pretty interesting, uh, it's a pretty interesting little burrito. But I got the soy paper, which has got a good, clean sesame seed taste. Yeah, see? Thank you. Sweaters, t-shirts, smiles. We got everything over <laughs> here at Lamborghini you. Las Vegas. <laughs> all right, listen. Serena, so, every time you buy a car at Lamborghini Las Vegas, make sure you ask for all the retail you can get because when I come here and buy cars, what do I get? I get models, okay? And what? T-shirts, okay? T-shirts is the most important thing to get when you buy a car, all right? You get to spec your cars out super sick. But when you get that shirt, shirt that's got the Lamborghini logo on it that matches your car, that's that's what it's all about, you know. Like buying an exotic car at this point is, you know, is just kind of like a regular thing around here, you know, because you know the rental fleet grows. You know, we, I'm not I'm not pretentious. I'm just saying, rental fleet grows, and then you know. But when you get all these special custom clothing items and all these models to put in my office, that's what it's about, you know. And the bears. So, uh, where's George? I think he's next door. Next door. All right, let's go find George. And uh, see, I got Rod, Serena, and George t-shirts uh, and sweaters. Thank you. So there's also a uh, second round coming um, because of our car show. What's up, Rod? I don't know, do you guys, have you ever met Rod Fuller? <laughs> do you know that Rod Fuller is legitimately taller than Jesse? Okay, and like Rod is like straight up He's a professional. Show him. Let me. Let's come on. Tell 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 everybody about Rod and what makes Rod Rod. Because this right here, the fastest human on the planet. That's what I'm talking about. How fast did you go, Rod? Three thirty six. Three. Oh, I could. I told everybody three thirty eight. Uh, zero to hundred from a standstill in eight tenths of a second at seven and a half times the force of gravity. All right, and I'm telling you guys right now, Rod. A hundred of these. Hundreds. Hundreds of these championship trophies. Rod is the the man over here with George at Lambo Las Vegas. Me and Rod have been friends for a long time, and Rod used to be a really important person at one of my competitors. But we always managed to become friends because our wives work together. Everything's really good. But uh, now Rod's over here selling out SVJs and Centenarios. We'll go check out the Centenario in the in a second. But one of the uh, cool showrooms in the country right now. Oh yeah, I mean you have the only Blue Cepheus Pervermonte. You've got uh, one of my favorites. Uh, is that Blue, Blue Calum? Uh, Blue Neptunes. Blue, I'm just called Blue Neptune. Sounds way cooler. All right, and then a flat white SVJ, and then the Arancio. It's Xanos. Xanos. Xanos Centenario. Now uh, a real special guy here in Vegas. He's the guy that makes everything. Uh, all the special hyper cars. One of our only guys out here. But uh, anyways, I'm gonna put the camera down. I'm gonna go look at some cars real quick. I brought gifts. All right, this is the old cluster. That is not from this car. All right, this cluster here was from the car that I bought the motor from. So the ECUs in the cluster matched. Well, dumb me, didn't think about the key. And uh, you need the key for all that stuff because the immobilizers are built into the cluster. So I believe I have sourced the cluster that has come from this particular car. Now, I don't know, it's a gamble, but um, to replace the cluster is 3,500 bucks, or 30, 3,200 bucks. And that includes programming and everything. So basically, if, if we could put this new one in, the key might, it might just turn on. We just don't know. Good news is, is I think that's the cluster. I think that's the OEM cluster. The bad news is, is I think it's damaged. Um, and, but the immobilizer fault was gone from the cluster. Still have no crank, but I think we have a solution for that. Um, essentially, 50-50, it's gonna, it's gonna crank. It doesn't need to start, it just needs to crank. Cranking is the important part here. No start, just crank. This is going relatively mediocrely well. All right, so essentially what happened was is that a mobilizer fault has been cleared. Now, we've converted this car from an e-gear to a manual, so there's some small, tiny little things that uh, we need to finish. Once I finish those, once we figure it out, 
which we're going to figure it out probably by Monday or Tuesday, uh, I think we're going to be started in running and driving by Friday. So now it's time to sit in a chance scenario, dream a little bit, and just show you what the dash cluster looks like. So funny story about this color, all right? The owner of this car spent four months, literally, listen, four months mixing all these different oranges for this car. And he came up with, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna say it wrong, but Arancio Zanos. Exantos. What is it? Exantos. Exantos. All right, I'm gonna call it Zanos because that sounds way cooler. Um, but think about that, like four months, right? Do you want to hear the crazy thing that Lamborghini did to him? This is now a standard color on a Huracan Evo. Now, that would be like so flattering if I designed my own color and they called it like Houston, right? But then they just didn't give you any credit for it, didn't give you anything. Is the new color Arancio Zanos? It is. The same, the same name? Same name. Man. And so the owner of this car didn't really get any credit they're just using his color just because like, that's it. That's so sad. It's kind of messed up, but I mean, at the end of the day, he could be like, yeah, you have that color because of me, you know? That's true. And they better give him one of the Trezor R replacement cars for like a discount or something. It's probably not gonna happen though, right? Give him a discount, we love him. <laughs> Dude, he's, look, the guy that owns this car is hyper car, I mean, he's a hyper car king. He has some of the craziest spec out cars i just saw his chiron white on full orange leather interior incredible spec that gets me to lead into this particular thing what do you guys think about the specs for the evos because we're going to spec two evos uh for royalty for the rental fleet and i have an idea of a spec that i want it's actually the spec that i chose for the uh svj that i ended up not getting just i didn't get the svj only because they made so many of them and you know they depreciate way too much for a car rental and uh, it just wasn't the right time for me. And uh, now we're about to spec two Evos, but I want one to be crazy and I want one to be kind of like maybe crowd spec. Maybe I'll let you guys spec it. I don't know, what do you think? George, you know, you brought up a good point. The steering wheel in the Centenario doesn't have any multi-function buttons on it. So good news, you ordered a spare to replace the Centenario wheel right which has just some boring carbon fiber okay sucks um now we've got orange leather matching the car matching the interior and uh volume control buttons because if anybody knows about centenarios they know that it takes two hands to raise the volume on the inside of the car so uh george please demonstrate raising the volume please i can't <laughs> I can't gotta keep my hands uh, safely at 10 and 2. yeah do a small cold start. Go ahead and just. All right, here's the, this is the real facts about changing the volume in your Centenario while you're driving. This is actually super dangerous. Uh, so first, here's, let's say you got music. Then you're gonna hit that button and uh, maybe try to hold that button. Audio. Uh, you can't play videos. Car, oh, see? Oh crap. That's hot. Now we're lost. Okay. Okay, so audio again. And then hold that other button down there. Now let it go. Uh, like, no, it was, it was in this button here. There's no other volumes. Okay. Just to slow, just to show you guys here. All right. No other volumes. Oh yeah. See, I just found it. Okay. So you got to hold this. Then it opens the volume. And then right here, you push, okay, push this, and then it goes up. And then, right, so then here, and it goes down. Yeah, you gotta do it with two hands. 
it, it's really yeah. a two hand type situation. There you go. All while you're driving, like three million dollar car, just a couple million dollar car, chilling, all the same. So hopefully the Huracan Evo uh, has a Urus system, which would make sense. I mean, this car is 2016 or 17. 17. 17. So. We're a couple years later from now, but uh, I think that the technology is much improved. If you're rolling around in a Chen scenario and you're worried about your volume, that's why we got the multifunction steering wheel installed coming soon. Um, if I bought a Chen scenario, if they ever became like a $1 million car, uh, I would for sure own one of these and twin turbo it. This would be the car that I would choose. I love the Lamborghini Chen scenario so much. I would probably put like a new front bumper on it because the, the shark looking front bumper is not the coolest thing I've ever seen. Uh, overall, Centenario, color 100%, uh, rear end 100%, side view 150%, uh, headlights, tail lights, everything, super gangster. The only thing we're missing is uh, functional radio and a uh, good looking front bumper. <laughs> What do you guys think of that, man? You know what's funny? Is that uh, we're about to leave and uh, they're pulling out some other cars. You're gonna pull out this beautiful Blue Cepheus on orange accents Performante. This is also a car, well, can't even see anything on the inside. It's all black, but there's orange in there. This is a car that is currently, it's currently available here at Lamborghini Las Vegas, as well as the Chen Scenario and the SVJ, all available to buy right here. Lamborghini Las Vegas is like the sleeper Lambo dealer. No one knows that they have all these super sick cars because, well, they're just the best and they just keep them on deck. But I'm about to leave and um, I was talking to George because I kind of feel like a, a new V12 car is basically in the works. You know, I don't know if uh, you guys heard, but uh, Bugattis are very expensive to maintain. And I think, I didn't say I was ready to part with the Bugatti, but um, I might be ready for something new. Now, my hyper car that I'm building isn't a car that's gonna be like ready to drive in two months. You know, the black twin turbo Gallardo though, might, you know, fit the bill for a while, but coming and seeing the SVJ next to the Trentenario, just, oh my God, I love that car. The SVJ just looks so good. The depreciation on them is, is a little bit extreme right now, so, I'm currently not really interested in buying one today because at 620,000 in about, I don't know, three months, they're probably gonna be a lot less. Uh, they're releasing 900 coupes and probably over 500 roadsters. That's too many cars for a $600,000 price point. Um, you know, the sweet spot is like 200 cars for a limited edition. And uh, anyways, I'm gonna stop ranting, but um, you guys, you know, I, I think today, was a little bit of an eye opener for me and I kind of really wanted to see if uh, a new car may be in my future. So uh, maybe a Ventador S, but you know what's funny is that like, I'm, I'm a guy that modifies everything. So if I did get a V12 car, it would 100% get twin turboed. Dallas Performance would have that car one day after I bought it because literally like I saw a twin turbo Ventador once and uh, it was basically like my dream. I've got too many projects going on right now to start another one, but once I finish up uh, the Lotus, the Gallardo, and uh, the Urus mods, I don't know. Twin Turbo on a V12 might be in my my, uh, in my cards. So I'm gonna end today's vlog right here because I've gotta drive back in traffic to, to uh, back to royalty and leave Lambo because I've gotta check and make sure that uh, Jesse's got uh, all those lines that he was doing on the Lotus because I think that's gonna start and run really soon. Like today, tomorrow, right now type thing. So we'll see you guys next video.